Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on the probability of compound events. Our objective is going to be to find probabilities of compound events. So if we look at two headings we would use to make an outline of this lesson, we could say that we're going to first find a sample space and also find probability. So as we look at our real world link, Amy wants to pack enough items to create six different outfits. She packs one jacket, three shirts, and two pairs of jeans. Can Amy create six different outfits from her clothing items? Well, we'll complete the table below. One outfit could be a jacket, shirt one, and jeans one. Another outfit can be the jacket, shirt one, jeans two. Well, with one, then we could go jacket, shirt two, jeans one. Jacket, shirt two, how about jeans two? And then we can go jacket, shirt three, jeans one, and then jacket, shirt three, and lastly, jeans two. This table is an example of an organized list. What is another way to show the different outfits Amy can create? Well, you could make a tree diagram. such as, and we don't need to draw this yet, but we might as well, because you could go with a jacket and then shirt one or shirt two or shirt three. And then from each of those, you could go jeans one, jeans two, jeans one, jeans two, jeans one, jeans two. So you could make a tree diagram. Describe another situation for which you may want to list all the possible outcomes. Well, what if you go out to a pizza place and you have different sized pizzas and different toppings and different cheeses? So what if you say, you know, pizza place where you have different sizes, toppings, and some places offer different cheeses. Another example could be a number of lunches you can make from a choice of salads, sandwiches, and desserts. So as we continue on, we have find a sample space. The set of all the possible outcomes in a probability experiment is called the sample space. Organized lists, tables, and tree diagrams can be used to represent the sample space. So as we look at our first guided example, the three students chosen to represent Mr. Baldrick's class in a school assembly are shown. All three of them need to sit in a row on the stage. Use a list to find the sample space for the different ways they can sit in a row. Well, if we abbreviate Adrian for A, Carlos for C, and Greg as G, we're going to use each letter exactly once. So we could go ACG, AGC, CAG, CGA, GAC, GCA. So the sample space consists of six outcomes. Again, sample space is the set of all the possible outcomes in a probability experiment. Got an example two. A car can be purchased in blue, silver, red, or purple. It also comes as a convertible ooh, or hardtop. Use a table or a tree diagram to find the sample space for the different styles in which the car can be purchased. Well, in our table here, our two categories were color and top. Well, we could have a blue convertible and a blue hardtop. We could have a silver convertible and a silver hardtop. We could have a red convertible and a red hardtop and a purple convertible and a purple hardtop. Or we could make a tree diagram where we have our colors here as blue, silver, red, and purple. 
And then for each of these colors, we could have a convertible or we could have a hard top. A convertible and a hard top. A convertible and a hard top. A convertible and a hard top. And then the sample space is summarized as BC, BH, SC, SH, and so on. But whether you use a table to list the outcomes or a tree diagram to list the outcomes, both show you the sample space of eight possible outcomes. So as we go down to try to do this ourselves to see if we've truly got it, the table shows the sandwich choices for a picnic. Find the sample space using a list, table, or tree diagram for a sandwich consisting of one type of meat and one type of bread. Let's go with the tree diagram. We'll try that way. So if we have our meat as our first category, we have two options. We have ham and we have turkey. Now from there, we have different bread choices. For the ham, we could go with either rye, sourdough, or white. But we can do the same thing from the turkey. We could do rye, sourdough, or white. So as we list out then our sample space, these sample spaces become HR for ham rye, HC for ham sourdough, and HW for ham white. We could do TR for turkey rye, TS for turkey sourdough, and TW for turkey white. Either way, we have a total of six outcomes. And you could make a table, and you could make a list as well. How can we use this concept of finding a sample space to help us to find probability? Well, a compound event consists of two or more simple events. The probability of a compound event, just as with simple events, is the fraction of outcomes in the sample space for which the compound event occurs. So as we look at the third guided example, Suppose you toss a quarter, a dime, and a nickel. Find the sample space. All right, that's just like the first few examples. And if we just start there, we have the quarter, the dime, the nickel, and our final sample space. Well, when you flip a quarter the first time, you could get heads or tails on it. When you go to the dime then, if you got heads the first time on the quarter, you could still get a heads or tails with the dime. Well, say you went heads and heads. From there with the nickel, you could still get heads and tails. And the thing is, for all of these, you go heads and then tails, you could still get heads or tails. You could get tails, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, 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 heads, and tails, tails, tails. And then as we list out our sample space, I may have listed it as HHH, HHT, and so on. The question is now asking us, what is the probability of getting three tails? Well, there's only one of these in the sample space that is three tails. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight possible outcomes. So one out of eight chance of getting three tails. So the probability of getting three tails is one eighth. And maybe as we do this example below in the got it, this might make a little more sense if we do this ourselves. So, the animal shelter has both male and female Labrador retrievers in yellow, brown, or black. 
there is an equal number of each kind. What is the probability of choosing a female yellow Labrador retriever? Show your work in the space below. Let's look at our categories. We have gender, we have different colors. And so for our gender, we could have a female dog, or we could have a male dog. Then from there, they have yellow, brown, or black. So for the color, if you have a female, you could have a female yellow, you could have a female brown dog, or you could have a female black dog. Same thing though with male. With a male dog, you could have a male dog that's yellow, you could have a male dog that's brown, or you could have a male dog that is black. And so as you make then your sample space, we could have a female yellow dog, we could have a female brown dog, we could have a female, black dog. We could go male, yellow, male, brown, and male, black. And that's our sample space. And listing this out will then help us find the probability of choosing a female, yellow, Labrador retriever. So let's go to the female, and we're looking for yellow. Well, here is our female yellow, and that is one out of six. We have six total outcomes, and it's one out of the six. So the way we can answer this question is to say that the probability, P, of getting a female yellow lab is equal to one-sixth. So we can make a tree diagram, list out our sample space, and find the probability of a given event. Now in our last guided example four, we're still looking to find the probability of compound events. To win a carnival prize, you need to choose one of three doors labeled one through three. Then you need to choose a red, yellow, or blue box behind each door. What is the probability that the prize is in the blue or yellow box behind door number two? Well, this time we used a table. And we had door one red, door one yellow, door one blue, door two red, door two yellow, door two blue, door three red, door three yellow, door three blue. And now we're looking for a prize that is in the blue or yellow behind door two. So we lock in here at door two where we have a yellow or a blue. Well, as the example says, this is two outcomes out of the nine. So the probability that the prize is in a blue or yellow box behind door number two is two ninths. So in this lesson today, you will be making tree diagrams. You could be making tables or lists. I think tree diagrams are the best. Tables may be second best in trying to organize your thoughts. Sometimes the list, you can get a little unorganized as you're making those. I think tree diagrams will help you be the most organized, then tables, and probably lists would be our last. All three work, though, to list out a sample space, then in order to find the probability of a compound event. So this is it for the lesson on probability of compound events. Good luck.